Guys, I want to start off today by saying thank you very much for all your amazing comments over the last few days and welcome to all the new subscribers to my channel. And also thank you very much for sending me all your comments over the last couple of days about Portuguese. Obviously I made the vlog yesterday talking about Portuguese and whether or not I'm going to do something about it in my vlog. In yesterday's video, the comments were kind of split 50-50. 50% of you guys said, no, I should not be putting uh, any subtitles or any Portuguese in the vlog. And the other 50% said they would love subtitles and for me to speak more Portuguese but I'm not 100% sure which way I'm going to go. One idea somebody had which was really a great idea, they said maybe I should do one video per week in Portuguese. I haven't decided yet but I'm still thinking about it and I still want more of your comments to let me know what to do. To be honest today in Vitoria is a really really rainy wet day and here in Vitoria especially there is really not much to do when it rains. I'm going to start off today by doing a short question and answer session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the comment section of my YouTube videos and I'm going to pick out a few questions. The first thing is from a guy called Frank Java who is a Brazilian vlogger as well and he has he has asked me to say a couple of words in Portuguese. He wants me to say caminhão and guaraná. These are the two easiest words I know in Portuguese. Guaraná I drink all the time. You guys will know that if you watch the vlog. Guaraná is amazing. The best just the best thing ever. I wish Guarana existed everywhere in the world. I also got a really great question from Danielle McDougall, who is a Canadian, who is coming to Vitoria in the next month. And I think she and her partner are coming here and asked how it's going to be and if anything that people who do not speak any Portuguese at all can do here in Vitoria. I've answered her on the comment section on one of my videos, but it'd be great if you guys could give her a hand. Here's my honest opinion. If you don't speak any Portuguese whatsoever, or if you don't know anyone from Brazil, it can be quite a tricky place uh, to get around and do stuff without any Portuguese. I know a lot of you guys watching understand English, but a lot of people on the street in general don't. And also, Danielle, you might get a little bit of a shock with the temperature because, yeah, you're coming from Canada, which is obviously quite a cold country, like my home country in Scotland, but at this time of year, it's the middle of winter and July, it could be quite chilly like it is now. As you can see, I'm wearing my hooded jumper. The temperature is about 18, 19 degrees. It's been raining for a couple of days. Now, when you come in July, it could well be the same. And in which case, it's not going to be weather for going to the beach, unfortunately. But at the same time, Brazil is a tropical country and cold fronts come and go. If the cold front leaves, which is quite possible, you could be looking at temperatures back up to 30 degrees plus, which means the beaches and all that kind of stuff is back on the cards. So bring light jumpers like this one, bring jeans as well, uh, and shoes as well as your shorts and t-shirt and beachwear because at this time of year, you could find it being a beach holiday and you could also find it being a not beach holiday at all. Despite what everybody knows about Brazil being a hot tropical country, it does get quite cold. And this year has been the coldest in many, many, many years across Brazil. But anyway, let's just presume the weather is going to be quite decent. My favourite thing to do here as a tourist is to visit the beaches in Vitoria because there are amazing beaches here across the city. Like, I can count probably six beaches here within five or ten minutes of the city, which I absolutely love. Again, guys, if you want to help Daniel out, put some comments down below and help her out. What should Canadian tourists do here in Vitoria? If they don't speak any Portuguese, the number one reason why I love Vitoria is the people are great and they're great with foreigners. So enjoy yourself, Daniel. Lucas Gonzalez asked me if I've ever been to Brasilia. I've been to Brasilia about four or five times, but I've only ever been to the airport. I've been to Brasilia to travel to other places. Like for example, when I went to Manaus earlier in the year, we, we stopped off in Brasilia's airport, but I've never actually got out the airport and explored the city. But I do plan to because I think Brazil is a cool place and I've got some friends who live there as well so one day I will explore Brasilia. So for the rest of this vlog I'm going to do something really quite different actually and something that I'm not sure has been done before in Brazil by a foreign vlogger journalist type person. I'm going to compare something which you find all the way around the world but they are slightly different here. I'll tell you more about that in a minute but listen guys if you are new to this channel don't forget to hit subscribe please that would help me out so much. Uh, and you can follow my daily adventures and I'm going to put the link right now on my face. Go ahead, click subscribe. McDonald's you'd expect is something, it's the same all around the world. But actually, there's a few things that as you travel between different places are different. And here in Brazil, McDonald's is slightly different from the rest of the world. It's got one or two sandwiches that are different that you don't find anywhere else, ironically. Uh, also, 
a couple of things from my own experience that I know. In the UK, McDonald's is like a cheap, really, really cheap fast food. The McDonald's here in Brazil is really expensive. Like you can eat things that are far, far better for the same price. For two people, you're looking at kind of 50 reais or more, which is quite a lot. You can eat really, really well for the same money in Brazil. Come on. Just to prove to you exactly what I was talking about, we just spent 70 reais on just a couple of normal meals. In the UK, it would be like 10, 15 pounds maximum. So yeah, McDonald's here is extremely expensive. And also, I find that McDonald's here is not like as convenient as in Europe as well. It's quite slow, although it's, it's quite fast today, but other times I've been here, it's been quite slow. I should point out, we don't come to McDonald's that often. I am back in the office. Uh, I just wanted to show you one burger. As I say, most of the things in McDonald's are the same around the world, wherever you go, but there's a few things that are different. They have a burger here called Cheddar McMelt. Now here's the strange thing, right? Cheddar is a cheese that's from the UK, where I'm from, and they don't have Cheddar McMelts there. How weird is that? Like, Cheddar, the cheese of the UK, here in Brazil, and they don't have it in the UK. It's only a burger you ever get here. Uh, I've never tried it before. Uh, packaging's all in Portuguese, that's different as well. It says, no words to describe the Cheddar McMelt. What's the secret of the Cheddar McMelt? The McDonald's slogan here in Brazil is, Amo muito tudo isso. The McDonald's did this thing with the Justin Timberlake song, I'm loving it. I think that's basically the Brazilian version of that slogan. The chips are exactly the same. Just dropped on the floor. The chips are exactly the same. Opening up the Cheddar McMelt and there's a loose chip. That there, that squishy orange thing is basically the cheddar that they talk about. The rest of it looks like normal McDonald's burger thing. I've got my cheddar McMelt, the cheddar sticking out of the sides and everything. That does not taste like cheddar. I know what cheddar tastes like and that's not really it. Maybe it's just as well we don't have cheddar McMelt in the UK. There's this thing called the Big Mac Index around the world which kind of it's kind of a fun way to look at the economy of the world and how much things cost. So they basically do the price of a Big Mac around the world. And Brazil always comes on the top of one of the most expensive in the world. I don't know why that should be, like, it's crazy. But there you go, that's McDonald's in Brazil. Little review. Something a bit different and interesting. I think it's interesting anyway, to see how McDonald's are slightly different. When we get these kind of cold weather fronts, I tend to get really bad headaches. I don't know if the two things... Sorry. What was that?